Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some breaking news coming out here for you regarding the war between Hezbollah and Israel right now. We've got lots of breaking news to go over. I've got lots of updates regarding this. So one of the biggest things that's going on right now just happened here in the last hour or so is we've got reports that the IDF has struck Beirut. Okay, Beirut is the capital and this has been something that's been highly anticipated was whether Israel was going to go after Beirut, okay? Something they mentioned a lot about just months ago. The IDF stated multiple times, along with the Israeli government, that they would level Beirut to the ground, okay? So what we saw happen just in the last hour is that there was an Israeli airstrike in Beirut, and they targeted the commander that is responsible for the Majdal Shams attack. So this is where it all begins right here, ladies and gentlemen. And Hezbollah is finding out real quick what's going to happen when uh, Israel responds to this attack. And this is only the beginning, okay? It's going to get much worse than this. I think Israel will launch more coordinated strikes, more strategic located strikes throughout the country. And uh, they will definitely go after everybody who is involved in this attack. We also had another rocket attack that just happened this morning, probably about four or five hours ago at the time that I record this. Hezbollah launched something like 10 rockets into Israel once again. And we have another report of somebody who was killed, an innocent Israeli that was killed. It was like a 30-year-old man. We'll go over that report here in just a little bit. So the attacks are not stopping from Hezbollah, okay? And uh, as long as the attacks don't stop, this is only going to give Israel more of a reason to hit Lebanon very hard and uh, potentially invade at some point. And, and hopefully this doesn't happen because this will definitely turn into a major regional war throughout the Middle East. Um, but uh, it's very possible we could be seeing that at some point. But I think what we will see in the beginning right now is just coordinated strikes on the uh, the country of Lebanon. So I want to go over first, we'll go over some exposts here for just a moment that we'll kind of bounce back and forth. I've got some articles I want to share with you too with some other news regarding this war. So let's go ahead and get into this. I want to first show you this uh, from Vicegrad24 on X as breaking major explosion in Beirut. So we've got a four-second clip here. I'll roll it a couple times so you guys can see it. And uh, it's just showing when this explosion took place inside of Beirut targeting that commander. <laughs> Okay, so we can see in this video, the attack just barely took place. We can see all the smoke from the rubble from this building that was destroyed. So some sort of high-rise building. Uh, this, this definitely, from what it appeared like to me at first when this information was coming out, this had to have been like a high-profile target attack. Then we started having reports coming out from the IDF and the uh, State of Israel's uh, X account. They came out and started stating why they struck this building in Beirut. And this makes perfect sense. This is exactly what Israel does. Anytime there is a commander involved in any kind of attacks that happen in Israel, this is one of the first things that Israel does is go after the commanders, okay? And apparently this building had this commander inside of it. We don't have the information of the name of the commander yet, but maybe we'll get that later. Maybe it'll come out and I can show you guys that. So let me get some other stuff pulled up here. We're going to take a look at a couple other things. I've got another uh, X post here as well. This is from the Israel Defense Forces, the IDF. Initial report, the IDF carried out a targeted strike in Beirut on the commander responsible for the murder of the children in Majdal Shams and the killing of numerous additional Israeli civilians. At the moment, there are no changes in the home front command defensive guidelines. If any changes will be made, an update will be released. Okay, so we're still waiting for more updates regarding this situation, but this is the reason why they did this, okay? The commander responsible for the murder of the children in Majdal Shams and the killing of numerous additional Israeli civilians. Okay, so if you're not aware of what the Majdal Shams attack, if you didn't see my update or maybe you don't know what that is, Majdal Shams was a town on the northern side of Israel. It's in occupied uh, Israeli territory. I think it was originally Syrian territory at some point, or these are Syrians there, but it's currently occupied by the Israelis. Um, and uh, this community got hit by a massive rocket that was apparently fired from Hezbollah. Hezbollah uh, immediately denied this, said it was not them that did this, but then the Israelis came out. The IDF said that this was for sure uh, Hezbollah that did this. Struck a soccer field, killing at least, I think, 10 or 12 children. Uh, very horrible attack. 
And uh, we had a bunch of other innocent people, bystanders, something like 30, 34 people that were wounded as well. So that's the whole reason why we're seeing this major escalation happening, because it's one of the worst attacks that happened in uh, what you would consider, I guess, for right now, Israeli territory, considering that uh, it's, it's Israeli occupied. But I know there's a lot of people that are uh, not happy with this decision either, because uh, a lot of people believe that this is, I believe, uh, Syrian territory, excuse me. So um, there's lots of, you know, controversy behind this. But let me show you one more thing as well regarding this attack from Vicegrad 24. Major Israeli airstrike destroys large parts of a building in Beirut, Lebanon. Looks like they went after a high-value target, okay? So this was uh, what Vicegrad 24 posted before that information came out from the IDF stating that they went after this commander. So take a look at this as well. Hey, yalla, el -bisi, el -bisi. Okay, so what we see here in this video, just a short clip, four seconds long, uh, is this building has been completely destroyed, okay? It looks like some sort of apartment building or something, uh, but this is exactly what the Israelis warned about, okay? And I think this is just the beginning of this, that uh, they will go after many targets, even in Beirut, and they've talked about leveling Beirut to the ground and turning Beirut into Gaza, uh, making it look like Gaza. Um, so th this is this has to have some sort of response from Hezbollah. I think they're going to respond here probably in the next couple hours. I wouldn't be surprised if they're responding right now. I'm sure there's uh, alerts happening, uh, air raid alerts, excuse me, happening inside of northern Israel and rockets are being fired. That's typically what we will see from Hezbollah. But uh, this is the beginning of something big right now. And uh, I think this thing is going to get out of control down here. There's a very big possibility that this is going to happen. Let me show you this as well. Let's talk about this just briefly for a moment on the Times of Israel. Civilian killed by Hezbollah rocket as Israeli reprisal to uh, Majdal Shams attacks. Majdal Shams, excuse me, attack looms. Missile strike strikes kibbutz in Upper Galilee. Airlines continue to suspend flights to Beirut amid fears of escalation. IDF strikes seven Hezbollah sites and seven areas in Lebanon overnight. So that was another thing. Lots of uh, IDF aircraft flying over Lebanon and bombing multiple sites across Lebanon last night. Lots of information coming out regarding that as well. An Israeli man was killed in a Hezbollah rocket strike on, on a kibbutz in uh, in northern Israel on Tuesday afternoon, as tensions escalate between Israel and the Iran-backed Lebanese terror group after its deadly rocket attack on the Golan Heights over the weekend. Medics declared the death of an Israeli civ uh, civilian in his 30s who was fatally wounded after a rocket hit Kibbutz Hagashrim in the Upper Galilee. The IDF said that 10 rockets were fired from Lebanon in the attack and most were intercepted by the Iron Dome missile defense system. Hezbollah claimed responsibility for the attack, saying it had launched dozens of rockets at a nearby military base. Military said it was shelling the launch site with artillery, while earlier fighter jets struck a Hezbollah site in southern Lebanon's uh, Jib Jibshit. Jibshit. Uh, Lebanon has been bracing for retaliation from Israel since a Hezbollah rocket attack on Saturday killed 12 children and teenagers at a soccer field. Israel and the U.S. have blamed Hezbollah for the rocket strike, though the group which admitted launching missiles at the area where the attack occurred has denied responsibility. So again, they have denied responsibility on the attack on Majdal Shams, uh, but this is the latest we have here too when it comes to more civilians being killed. And this is all at the time when the IDF is prepared to respond uh, to this attack that happened on the Majdal Shams soccer field. Now we're starting to see the beginning of this where Israel is actually launching coordinated strikes in Beirut to take out the commander that was supposedly responsible. Now we've got another civilian who's been killed here. So this is only going to make things even worse, create more tensions, and uh, it's only going to continue to worsen as time goes on. So I want to show you guys some more stuff here. I've got one more thing we're going to talk about real quick before we jump back on X. We talked a little bit about this uh, just, I think, yesterday, the day before, about the president of uh, Turkey, Erdogan, says, we'll send Turkish forces if Israel enters Lebanon, says former envoy. Dr. Elon Liel predicts Erdogan will indirectly support P Palestinians through aid and smuggling, not direct military action against Israel. Okay, this is uh, President Erdogan of, uh, of Turkey. Dr. Elon Liel, former uh, foreign ministry director and former Israeli ambassador to Turkey, commented on the possibility of a Turkish invasion of Israel in light 
of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, uh, his recent threats to intervene in the Israel-Hamas war, Dr. Leal told Radio North 104.5 FM on Tuesday, he is hinting that he may try to increase military assistance to help the Palestinians in their fight, both Hamas and those fighting in the West Bank, Dr. Leal told uh, Gadi Ness. Dr. Leal added he previously attempted this when he set up a headquarters in Turkey for them, intending possibly to conduct military operations smuggle weapons and transfer money in order to purchase weapons, it is unlikely that Erdogan, who is known for to act irrationally, would send Turkish soldiers to invade Israel. So we talked about this uh, just, like I said, the last day or two. And uh, there was lots of reports from, uh, from Erdogan himself that he was stating that he would send troops to invade Israel if Israel goes after Hezbollah. Okay, so this is obviously really big news. And I've talked a lot about Erdogan lately that uh, he's very supportive of Hamas, he's supportive of the Palestinian people, completely against the state of Israel, uh, blocking all trade with Israel, lots of big things like that. Um, and uh, it's a very big question on whether Erdogan would actually uh, call in his forces to invade Israel and help out Hezbollah if this war breaks out. So that was just some information about from his former envoy, stating that uh, he may not actually send troops to invade Israel, but uh, potentially indirectly support the Palestinians by giving them weapons or you know money, whatever it might be, to continue their actions against Israel. And kind of, in a way, what we've been seeing all over the world is use another proxy group to fight for them. Um, is kind of what it, we're, we're seeing here from Erdogan. So I wanted to share an update just real quickly regarding that situation. Um, so it doesn't look like uh, Erdogan will actually send troops to invade Israel. But then again, that's something that he stated, okay? So... We'll have to see what happens with that, but that's the latest we have on that situation. Also here on Reuters, Hezbollah rejects calls to avoid answering anticipated Israeli attacks. So apparently countries, especially the U.S., hoping that Hezbollah won't uh, respond to any of these attacks, but that's exactly what they're going to do, okay? Hezbollah is going to launch a bunch of rockets at Israel again. Who knows, maybe an insane amount of rockets this time and drone attacks and all kinds of different things. All this is going to do is create more tension, okay? This war is not going to just cease because Israel launches coordinated strikes and cripples Hezbollah. I just don't see that happening. All we will see from here is mass uh, tension and, uh, and, you know, tensions flaring in this region, and it's only going to create more retaliation from Hezbollah and then more widely expand the war. That's all we're really going to see. That's why I wanted to share that with you guys because I thought that was some pretty big news. Now, finally, uh, I'm going to show you a few more things here on X to get you caught up on what's going on down here as well. Uh, let's go ahead and show you this first. We've got new video footage, apparently, that was just released from the uh, official X account of the State of Israel on X. It says, this is the moment a Hezbollah rocket hit a soccer field and playground in Majd al-Shams, killing 12 children. So we've got brand new video footage that came out. It is not graphic, so don't worry. But uh, we've got mass panic whenever this rocket comes in. And the person recording, I believe, it seems like they could be either on this soccer field or very close to it is what it looks like. So take a look. <laughs> All right, so absolutely frightening. I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, if it if it uh, if I'm correct, it looks like the explosion happens not too far away from this person. When the camera turns right there, you can kind of see. Sorry, we'll pause this real quick, and I'll show you guys this. When the camera pans behind them, if you can see, I think that's the explosion just right behind them. So they were very close to this whenever this rocket went off. And I don't know, this This kind of looks like they're next to a playground or something. I don't know the layout of this soccer field. Maybe there's a playground nearby. Kind of looks like there might be a playground, but it definitely looks like they weren't that far away from this rocket. Thankfully, this person wasn't hit. But again, unfortunately, we had at least 12 children who were uh, killed or 12 people in total. And then also uh, we had like 30-something wounded in this attack. Okay, so it was a major attack on Majd al-Shams. So I'm going to go over a couple more things here as well with you guys. Just absolutely insane news, what's going on over here. 
So I've got another report here as well from the IDF, and it says, There seems to be no end to Hezbollah's dedication to terrorizing the civilians living in northern Israel. Today, approximately 10 projectiles were launched from Lebanon into northern Israel. The attack left a civilian dead. Af only a few days after the Majd al-Sham's massacre that took the lives of 12 innocent children, Hezbollah once again proves that they show no remorse. So look at this. This is only going to create more escalation here, ladies and gentlemen. It's only going to get worse in this war. And uh, I, again, I don't think that these strikes inside of uh, Lebanon is really going to do much. I think if anything, all it's really going to do is just pro possibly make Hezbollah even more angry and fuel this war effort even more. And at some point, we are going to have major escalation to the point that uh, we're going to have a lot of countries getting involved, okay? There's going to be tons of countries here, possibly Iran, Syria, Iraq, okay? There's lots of Iranian-backed groups in these countries as well that are nearby that want to get involved in this war. And then imagine if the, the uh, Yemen Houthis get involved and uh, maybe Saudi Arabia gets involved. And if Saudi Arabia tries to help out the U.S. and Israel, well, now they could be attacked by the Yemen Houthis who are right next door to them and they've already threatened to strike their oil fields. So this whole thing is just a powder keg waiting to explode. Let me show you one more thing here as well. This is on the Times of Israel alerts on X. Live update, Hezbollah says it fired at Israeli warplanes in Lebanese airspace, forced them to turn back. Okay, so we've even got uh, Israeli warplanes, F-35s, entering into uh, Lebanon and being shot at because we know that, uh, that Hezbollah does have air defense systems. I don't know how many they have or how capable they are. I've, I've never heard of them shooting down an Israeli warplane. They have shot down a few uh, drones uh, from the Israelis, but I haven't heard of anything of them shooting down a warplane. But uh, imagine if this happens, okay? Imagine if one of their warplanes gets shot down. This would be absolutely insane if this does happen. Uh, but again, guys, I just wanted to share some of the latest coming out here. So just kind of the recap, one of the biggest stories here was this Apartment building is what it appears like, some sort of building, high-rise building getting struck in Beirut. And this is only the beginning. I think we're going to see more strikes in Beirut for sure. And again, this is something really big that the U.S. was pushing Israel not to do, was do not strike Beirut. Uh, don't start attacking Beirut. And we're starting to see the beginning of that. And I think Israel's going to do what they want to do because the U.S. also came out just yesterday, the day before, saying that uh, Israel has the right to defend itself. So what does that mean? Israel has the right to do whatever they feel is necessary. They've got the permission of the U.S. government as well and the backing of them, the backing of the U.S. government to strike and do what they need to do to go after Hezbollah. And that includes blowing up buildings inside of Beirut, the capital. So that's going to be it for this update, guys. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.